How do you run electrical in a barn where you want the framing to be seen on the inside so you don't have a cavity on the inside to run electrical and you don't want to run conduit? Let's find out today on Smith House. Howdy y'all, it's Jordan Smith. My wife Veronica and I run Smith House Company. We are a develop design build firm out here in Austin, Texas, and we have a cool project out towards Houston that's 40 acres that we call Monarch Woods. And it's a fantastic property that we're putting a barn and a house on. With the barn, we wanted it to have the aesthetic of an old-timey barn that's in the future, right? So a modern version of an old timey barn here in Texas, all too often you see these barn dominiums where they take metal buildings and they are metal clad on the outside. And then they put maybe some insulation, some thin batting on the inside. And that's the final finish. Or maybe they use that same U panel or R panel as their finished cladding on the inside. And the main drive behind all of that is look how much square footage you can get for so cheap. It's just such a cheap way of building. That's not what the owner was going for here. That's not what we build is like how cheap we can make it, but it is a barn. So we didn't want to just spend crazy amount of money um, doing something that would prevent us from building a super awesome house. So what we came up with is this really cool, what I think is a really cool design where all of the structural components of the barn are seen from the inside of the, of the barn. So you see the six by six columns, you see the, the rafters, these are big six by 16 or six by 24 rafters that are every eight foot up on top. And then on top of that, you have the roof decking, this tongue and groove roof decking. And then on the walls, you see the plywood sheathing that's actually acting as a sheer wall sheathing. All of that can be seen from the inside. And it just gives such a warm, nice, beautiful look to it. And we didn't want to run that by running conduit everywhere. Um, one conduit's not all that pretty. And two, wouldn't it be cool if you just didn't? And it's like, where is, here's a light switch and there's a light. How does this light switch get to that light? You know, have a little bit of mystery to it. Well, I'm going to take the mystery out. It wasn't really that hard. All we did is we ran all of our electrical on the outside of the building and then we brought it back in only where we needed. So uh, to walk you through it here, I'll walk you through on this on this drawing here. So you see here in on this rendering, this is the plywood here. We've got our girders expressed. We've got our six by sixes. We've got our beams. And we have our lights here that are just poking through the decking. And that light switch is over here up against this wall. Now to get from this light switch up to these lights up here, we actually run outside of the building, up the wall, onto the roof, and over here to these lights up on the ceiling. So everything is ran external. And that's really cool, but there's a couple of challenges to do that. Um, number one was just making the chases from one side to the other. We we actually have a, on up here, we have a... Um, electrical room that a lot of this stuff goes from this inside high bay to the low bay roof over here. So we're actually, we're actually transferring from this electrical room outside on this wall. So this is where everything comes from inside to outside, unless it goes up through the ceiling, but we can only do the ceiling where we have the lights because we didn't want to have, you know, just a big wad of cables running up through the, up through the ceiling. We ran all of those out into the wall from the interior of this electrical room. So from the electrical room outside on onto the roof. So that was one challenge. How do you get a lot of wires from the inside to the outside? The second challenge was once you got them to the outside, now you have to run them everywhere that they, that they need to, to go. So we actually have tracks of wire that run down the roof and then split out to all of the different places, either back down to switches through the exterior wall or to the lights above. And when we did that, we had to make sure normally in an attic, you might have not that any of your electricians would ever do this, but a lot of electricians will just take a wire and they'll pull it across the attic and they'll take another wire and they'll pull it across the attic. And this happens over and over and over again. And you just wind up with a spider web of wires up there in an attic. It's slightly annoying. It's not that big of a deal. Maybe not my preference, but you know, it's whatever it's, it's whatever. Here, we cannot do that because if we just ran our wires willy-nilly, as soon as we put our insulation on, 
Now we, the, the, the way this roof assembly works, let me go over here to this, this detail here on this roof assembly. So you see, we've got, this is our, this is our rafter beam there. And then on top of this rafter beam, all those lines are my, are my nails. I was showing the engineers how I wanted to screw this all together. Um, but we've got the beam and then we've got our two by decking. And then up on top of that, we have our insulation. And then on top of that, we have another, um, another half inch plywood decking. And then on top of that, we have our metal roof. So we've got a beam, uh, tongue and groove decking, insulation, half inch plywood decking, metal roof as we go up. And when we cover those wires with this insulation, we don't want to lose those and put a screw as we screw this top decking through this insulation into our bottom decking. We don't want to accidentally go through one of those wires because if we do, bad news bears. I mean, it's going to be such a pain to go find where this thing shorted out. Um, it's just going to be a pain. It, I don't even like talking about it because by this time, by the time we have everything wired up, we're going to have the roof finished and this is a mechanically seamed roof so we've got the two pieces of metal coming up like this and then we crimp it and then we crimp it again so it's a it's a double crimp pulling that off after the fact because we've shorted something out is is it's just not it's not feasible we cannot do that so we made very sure that we ran all of our wires in predetermined places we marked all those places on the insulation. When we added the decking, we marked all the insulation on the decking, and we made sure that we screwed this top decking well away from all of our wire runs. That's probably the biggest takeaway. If you take anything away from this and you're trying to do it yourself, just make sure you know where your wire is running through that insulation or you're gonna be, you're, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. I hope this helps. I think it's a pretty cool solution. What do you think? Comment below with any of your questions, anything you would have done differently, anything you'd like to see on a next video. Like and subscribe if we've earned it. Go follow us over wherever you waste your time on social media. Hope you have a great day and we'll see you next time on Smith House.